It's one year since we retired to live our dream of traveling the world for the next 10 years. And we've been contemplating over the last few days, actually, how it's been. And we've got food for thought for you here. You, at the end of this video, may be thinking, oh, let's do it, let's go, go, go. <laughs> Equally, there is a good chance by the end of this video, you might need to replan completely. So a year ago, we hopped on that plane. We were so excited, but we were also wet behind the ears. And that just seems such a long time ago, doesn't it? Oh, really does. But do you know what? We're going to go through stuff today. And although what we're going to be talking about is pretty subjective, you know us, we love our data. And I think we've got a method of scoring this stuff that will tell you whether we think we've made the right decision. And I think, Sarah, you've touched on the very first thing there, haven't you? Yeah, can you remember when we were back in our working life, just time just went really, really quick. And I can remember like planning for the Monday morning's meeting and then the week would fly by and there I am again planning for next week's meeting. It just seemed to just whiz by. Yeah. It sounds really weird. No, well, but... it does, but I remember that treadmill all too well myself. And now it seriously seems ages ago when we were in Mexico and Turkey, although it's only just recently, it just seems like a distant memory. Yeah, so would you put this down as a positive or would you put it as a negative? 100% positive. Time is just going by so slowly now we are slow traveling compared to our old life. So positive. Okay. One nil for the positives. Let's move on to the next one. Sodika. The guy, the moo. Guy, that's that. Chicken and pork. Okay. Chicken inside. Oh, okay. Okay, is it, what's this? And pork. Pork. Okay. Uh, is this um, like my pet? My, no. no? No, no spicy. Pet? No, no spicy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, right, uh, one chicken. One chicken. And one pork. One chicken, one pork. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, what happened? Okay. Yes. And big some more. <laughs> pork, you have pork. One, is that, one. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Okay. There two. Yeah. <laughs> Different <laughs> car. <laughs> 45 baht. There's a uh, 60 there. Yeah. Kupen ka. Ah, okay. Thank you. Kupen ka. Kupen ka. Bye bye. <laughs> never gets easier, does it? It never gets easier, but what we have done is we've built ourselves some coping mechanisms for this. So, Sarah, <laughs> um, when thinking about the coping strategies, do you remember there was that one issue in that bakery? Do you remember that? In Athens? In a... <laughs> oh God, yes, yes. I nearly walked into a really sticky situation. Let me set the scene for you. We are in Athens and every day we were walking the same route. We would go past the bakery and it was one of these really busy bakeries next to a metro station. And there's all these pastries in the window, look absolutely beautiful, you know. So, Sarah one day said, oh, why don't we <laughs> pop in and pick up a pastry of some kind? One of my cheese pastry. Well, here is the problem, <laughs> because in there, nothing at all is in English. In Athens, trust me, not many people speak English. So I said to Sarah, right, you walk in the door, what's your plan? Because imagine <laughs> you've got a load of pastries in front of you. Hundreds of things. Hundreds of all different types. Everything's in Greek. And you go up to the counter and you say, well, what would you say? Uh, exactly. What's that one? And, yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but behind her. <laughs> it's all rush hour. All Everyone's rush hour. People queuing who've got, like, they get on Metro <laughs> to get on. Treats. What is it you learn from that? Well, now, if we'll always try and have a go, and if it's a one-to-one -one situation and it's just the shopkeeper and us, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We just smile and walk off. Managing institutions, money, and people back home in the UK hasn't exactly been the delight we thought it would, was it? <laughs> no, not really. You know, we had that thing that we spoke about in last week's video of getting all of our accounts almost blocked and shut down forcing us back to the UK. But add to that, 
we seem to spend an inordinate amount of time clicking on penguins, <laughs> bikes, traffic trucks, lights. <laughs> traffic lights. Even though we've got a VPN on, our technology back in the UK keeps looking at us going, you guys aren't in the UK even though you're telling us you are. So that's just one of those things as well. And it's the people as well. The people, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, Pam. Monks. Sorry, Pam. Monks. It's good coming out early. Do you remember the Sky one? Yeah, Sky TV. We cut the cable with them years ago. Recommend anyone does that, to be honest. <laughs> but they contacted me to say, right, we got a fantastic offer for you to get Sky TV. I said, no, don't think, don't, don't think we're your uh, core customer, really. Well, we don't actually watch TV. <laughs> oh, there was silence on the line, wasn't there? <laughs> he said, you don't watch TV? Then what do you do? <laughs> so there are all of these institutions, people trying to sell us cars and all sorts of stuff. And the minute we say anything along the lines of, yeah, we're in Thailand or something like that, they kind of treat us like we're a bit weird, like, like we're crazy Brits that have gone abroad, you know, hiding from the government or something. We do get treated just not the same as I remember back in our old world. So that has got to go down, really, as a negative, isn't it? Yep. Sometimes it isn't the travel that fails us, it's us that fails to travel. We haven't exactly been healthy in our cooking or eating, have we? No, not really. If there's other nomads watching this, let us know what you do. What are we doing wrong? Over this last year, we've tried slow travel on a whole range of different speeds, I guess. Through doing all that, we found that it was just difficult to think about our health because we were thinking so much about yeah. what we were doing, weren't we? Yeah, it did take its toll on us, to be honest. And although we cooked at home, it was mainly breakfast. So we just found it difficult for various reasons for actually cooking at home. Could be the utensils that were in our apartment. Might actually be the space in yeah. the kitchen. I remember, Sarah, in Greece, <laughs> me preparing Christmas dinner. Yes. In a postage stamp. It was absolutely <laughs> tiny. So that, well, that's a negative, isn't it? Absolutely. Something that we expected to be a negative turnout I think to actually be a positive, and that is travelling with COVID. Are you crazy? That's, it was a nightmare. We expected it to be a nightmare, but, and don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying COVID itself wasn't a nightmare. We know many people have been impacted by certainly different levels when it comes to COVID. What we found is that it actually enabled us to be much more intentional travellers in that way. In the olden days, pre-COVID, if we were going somewhere, we wouldn't really think about the travel yeah. and it would be like the morning we're leaving for the airport. Where's the passports? Oh, yeah. there. Stick them in the bag. We're off. Boom. Off, off around the world we go. <laughs> but now we have to plan way ahead and it's actually making us a lot more controlled in what we do. And which more is intentional. A, more intentional, which is making it a better experience because it's a more trusting yeah. experience for both of us that we know as we're going to get to a location, we've ticked all the boxes we need to. So I wouldn't say COVID travel has been a bad experience at all. Well, there you have it, everyone. There's Neil saying COVID, it's a good thing. Can you imagine if we wanted a thumbnail and a clickbait title, it would be COVID, we loved it. And that leads nicely on to the next positive, which is we've become travel experts. Having traveled in the last year over four continents, we now realise what is important around travel and what isn't. Yeah, oh, there's a thing actually. For our viewers, let us know in the comments. We spent a lot of time scoping out a video and I've actually written a script for it, which was basically, we worried about all of these things before we traveled and put all these things in place before we traveled. And we've listed out all the things we wasted our time on <laughs> that we literally didn't need to do. So. We've scoped it, but I think it's a little bit similar to other videos we've done recently. So we've put it right down the list of what we're going to actually work on. But if you're all watching this going, no, that, no, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Stick that down in the comments and we can promote it up if enough of you really want us to do that next. So we're really conversant now with the visa processes and also how we select our accommodation to be the most cost effective and also local money, local currency. 
And the list goes on, really. Yeah, we're, we're pretty cool, really, yeah. aren't we, you and me? I think we might be. Now, look, I've got a couple of negatives to get through, and these are pretty serious, so I want to find someone to sit down and okay. go through these, oh, if that's OK. Just got to say, though, we haven't really introduced where we are. <laughs> we're wandering around <laughs> the old city of Chiang Mai at... What time is it, Sarah? 7.03. 7. We've been videoing for a good half an hour already as well. So 7 o'clock in the morning. It's Gorgeous lovely and quiet. It's not that hot, which no, is one of the benefits. Perfect. But hopefully you can see just how beautiful Chiang Mai is. Right, let's get to those negatives. Mm. Mm. Was that pork? I think so. Either pork or chicken. <laughs> These. It's lovely flavour. It's got a... It's got a kind of sweet glaze. Are you saving some of that for me? Oh. I thought we were sharing. <laughs> What's this, chicken? I think it's chicken. Mmm, that pork. You've settled down to go through these two negatives in the grounds of a beautiful... I was just in a cute little camera. Hello, I was going to say. A the beautiful cats. temple. <laughs> and still early in the morning, there are monks going around doing their early morning tasks, which is very cool. So the, the first... The getting up, though. Yeah, <laughs> she's suffering a bit. <laughs> so the first of these two that I wanted to go through is to do with routine. And we thought before we started this that slow travel would enable us to get into a routine. And let's just take an example of a one month location, because at the outset of slow travel, that's what we thought we'd be yeah. doing of one month at a time. Yeah. But we've, we've, we've been yeah, mixing things that change up. up. Yeah. You get to a location, the first week you're there, it's exciting. And you're going out and you're exploring yeah. and yeah. seeing your lo <laughs> locale and looking at some of the sites. And you just, it's that, it's that uh, honeymoon period yeah. at the start. Then the second week you start to find those little hidden gems. There's that coffee shop around the corner that's got really good internet speed and is a really cool place. We like going there. Oh, look, there's a great supermarket for buying produce. And so you start to find and also those... great restaurants for trying yeah. all the lovely food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you get all these hidden gems. And then week three, you start to feel a bit of a routine yeah. emerge. And routine is great. Routine isn't boring. Routines are things yeah, we all need in a rut. to get it's through life, routine. isn't it? Routine. Yeah. So you get the routine, brilliant, in week three. In week four, you're already thinking about your next location. You're thinking, ah, oh, we were going to go and see that. We forgot, we did. Let's quickly go and see that. And we've got all this stuff in the in the cupboard or in the in the fridge. Yeah, we need to was, run that yeah. down. So we start thinking about that, forgetting about routine. And then we get an email through from the airline saying, sorry, we've just had to cancel your flight. You're going to be doing two. You're going to be leaving two days later. Right. You're then online for two days looking at accommodation, what you wanted to do, mm. you can't do. So actually we found that we've gone on this cycle a lot and that cycle is we want a routine we build a routine we break the routine we move on that's life really isn't it any other fellow nomad are we doing something wrong let us know in the comments below yeah we'd, we'd <laughs> love to know or if you're not a fellow nomad but you think well this is what i do they're idiots let us know <laughs> down below you haven't got to say the idiot no, bit unless no. you're talking about obviously this yeah. one over here <laughs> so the other negative I wanted to cover was family and friends and it is an obvious one but it needs to be spoken about and Sarah we're not going to get emotional on this one so <laughs> now you've said that <laughs> so you keep out of it I'm going yeah, to I'm quiet. just going <laughs> to knock this one out of the park <laughs> if you've been watching this for any amount of time you'll know that at one point last year we needed to return back to the UK as a matter of urgency and I'm not going to go into the detail of why that was now but it was an extremely difficult situation and going back and spending time with family was just what I wanted to do and just what we needed at that time. And the thing that was really difficult then was getting back on a plane. Mm. You're surrounded by your family and you're then saying, right, we're off. And that's really difficult because you're leaving people behind that you know rely on you to an extent and you know that we rely on them that's why we speak to family every day yeah. but what we learned in the short time we were back in the uk i think it was a couple of months was that as we've gone back and no we've 
sold everything. We haven't got a house. We haven't got anything of our own in the UK <laughs> at all. As we're going back, we're living other people's lives. We were living my dad's life. Yeah. And we were living your mum's life. Yeah. And we were living your, your sister and brother-in-law's life. This is the difficulty. So... As we're leaving... We feel like we're in the way, actually. I think that's what we're... You know, feel yeah. like we're in their life. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't feel like we were saying, right, this has been a t difficult period. Anyway, we're off on vacation. Bye, everyone. Mm. It's actually... We're off on the rest of our life. So we said family, but there's friends as well. And someone actually told us about this before we started our mm. time of travel. And that is that when you change your phase of life from being the... I guess the standard into doing what we're now doing it's really different it's odd in many respects and although we've got fantastic friends yeah. we've got amazing friends that we've left back home I think as time goes on they feel that they have less and less in common with us and I'm thinking then that probably means they feel mm. that they don't want to bog us down with stuff. We're finding that if it's not us that's really making that happen, it will just fall by the wayside. And it's, by, it's no fault of anyone. And if there yeah. are any of our friends watching here, we want to have those video chats and we want to hear about your boss. Absolutely. Or what I... <laughs> don't say it. Okay. You're going to have to but bleep we, that bit. We want, <laughs> we want to see all this stuff. So really, honestly, <laughs> of all of the negatives we're going to go through on this list, this is the this is the biggie. So Neil, I think the negatives are winning. Sarah, the negatives have been winning. The next thing that's been a massive win has been budgeting. Mm. And do you know, Sarah, I'm not sure if you do realise this, that we've spent less this year than in any other year of our life. And that's yeah. by, by travelling the world. Yeah, so all this talk of inflation and actually for us spending less is actually fantastic news. The, so on the budget front, that goes down as a positive. And actually we've not finished totally enough our budget for no, the last year. Today that. is basically the, the, yeah. the, a day a year, to a, ago year, a year ago that we started our travel. So we can't close the budget until we finish today. And we've not been looking at the uh, overarching budget for a good no, couple, couple of months. months yeah. So we think we're on track, but we don't know we're on track. Mm. So is this going to be a score draw? Is there another positive? Sarah, living with less. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we went through that process of selling absolutely everything. We got a few bits in Sarah's mum's wardrobe in the back bedroom. But other than that, <laughs> all we've got is what's in our backpacks and what's in two suitcases. That's it. And do you know what? I don't want to be sexist here, but back in the old world, it was Sarah that had all the shoes. She was like a Melda Marcos. <laughs> all the clothes and dresses and all the makeup. So... How does it feel to you living with less, honestly? I really, really enjoy it. It just makes things feel so much freer. I haven't missed any of it, really. OK, so... It's the odd pair of shoes I miss, but, yeah. So you're saying living with less is a positive, honestly? Or is that just like a soundbite for a video? Yes, honestly, I, I feel like I haven't missed any of it and I'm happy to travel without it. And if I do need something, now I've realised you can actually just go out and buy it. And what I tend to do is if I buy something, something else has got to go so I don't end up with loads of more stuff. So, is it a score draw? No, no, it is not a score draw, Sarah. So I've got one more up my sleeve. Oh, something you didn't know about. <laughs> and that really is, this lifestyle is us. Before we did it, we hoped, we dreamed that we would be saved world <laughs> travellers and we would love this life of travel but we really didn't know let's look at it this way what if i said to you right stop i'm sending you back to your you old say world that to me quite regularly <laughs> i would not like to go back to our old lifestyle yeah so i'm not gonna send i'm not sending sarah no. back i'm not doing that but i'm miss me too much wouldn't you but we are going to send you our viewers somewhere and that's into our playlist 
on all of this stuff. We've made a series of things all to do with how this all feels about slow travel. So go and check out that playlist now. If you're not really interested in getting into a playlist, you're interested in the money around all this, then go back to this video and this will show you what our budget was for this first year of travel. And then you can see in a week or two whether we achieved it. Go and live your intentional life. You've been watching Two Go Row. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.